Do you want to bring the next level of detail to your layout? Are you curious about creating your own Arduino-based welding simulator with sound? Well, this video is for you. Join me as I walk you through this step-by-step -step process how you build the simulator. You'll also be amazed what you can achieve with limited knowledge like myself and also a limited budget. Enough of the waffle, let's talk about it. This is the circuit in all its glory, so I'll just quickly walk through how what I'm trying to achieve here. So this first portion of the sketch is where I've either pushed the button or simulated with a proximity or IR type sensor. So at this point, the music starts playing. So whatever you've put on track number one or labeled number one is what's playing here. So that obviously is going to simulate someone coming up to the edge of the layout and going, okay, that's what's, let's have a look at this little funicular. So at this point, this is where the blue and the white light start dancing on. So this is to obviously simulate the, the flash of the arc welder. So I've also put this plays track number two on the audio or the MP3 player, which in my case is the arc welder. So all up the arc welding sound will probably go for 32 to 40 seconds, give or take. So moving forward, just to add a little bit more realism to this, just as I'm doing my editing here, I probably would look at adding some sort of maybe some background factory type noises to add to all this also. So the next portion of this, the red light comes on. So this obviously is simulating the, the, the hot metal and you can see as it sort of dulls down over a few seconds that it will sort of simulate the, the heat coming out of the metal. So as that metal is sort of cooling down, it gives it enough time to pick up his hammer and hits that a few times and then picks up his wire brush and you can now start hearing the wire brush on the metal sound type sound. The brushing's finished, what you're gonna find, the fabricator's now gonna pick up his grinder and you'll see the, the, the yellow and the amber light sort of dancing around to simulate uh, a little bit of sparking in that uh, of him of the fabricator cleaning up the, the welding joint. So this next portion of the grinder does go a little bit longer, so I have shortened it for the interest of keeping this video just a little bit shorter. So what happens after this, the grinder stops, then it loops back to the initial arc welding as he's gone through and fixed up the weld. He just needs to do a little more weld, and then at that point, the sketch stops and resets for the next operation. Talk about the sounds very, very quickly. So in a previous video, I sort of went through uh, Adobe Audition. There's a three free version of a sound manipulating program. It's called Audacity. So um, I have used Audacity before. I'll put a link to all these below. So to get your sounds, there's various places you can do them. I either get them from Pixabay, which I've got up here on the screen, or another like called Quick Sound. So it's just a matter of going searching on them. And then I've got Welder up here. So there's two different types here. So it's just a matter of downloading the one that you like like the sound of and then we'll go over to the software and I'll just quickly show you how that might look up on the screen is looking inside uh, Adobe Audition so it does look quite daunting but it's very very simple in the way it works is you got numerous tracks here that you can put here so it basically just lays your sounds so this is a previous project that I was working on a farmyard that's got chickens and cows and all sorts going on so reach out below if you'd like me to show you a little more depth on maybe how to use audition for our for model model rail rating and the like so what you do with these these programs are I'll just bring up a, a fresh what we call a multi-track so this is what we got a fresh multi-track so what I'm going to do is just quickly bring in the sound effects that we were using well in the in the project so I'll just bring in the grinder so this is the the grinder so you can see it's quite long it's 38 nearly 8, 38 seconds in length so what you can actually do is you can manipulate the sounds you can play with the volumes of it you can layer other sounds into it if you don't quite like it so what I was talking about the the grinding and the wire brush you might want to look at putting some more ambient net, uh, sounds in the background like some factory noises and the like so at this point what you need to do so each track needs to be numbered sequentially so when the arduino is looking for the tracks it's going to look for them in numbered order so 
the welding one in this occasion is track number one so all it's just a matter of doing is when you save it out or yeah what we call export the file is a multi-track mix down on this case all you do is you need to name it what you need to do is name it 001 for the first track dot mp3 and just save it to the location where you're doing your project and then we look at doing track number two which is uh, the hammering and then the brushing is number three and then then track number four is the grinding sound you can put them in any order in on to load them onto the sd mini card or the sd card however they obviously need to be numbered in this convention so the arduino knows what they're looking for and plays the correct track so loading up on the sd i won't sort of go over that too in too much detail so all it is a matter of if you know how to load a file onto a USB or an external hard drive it's exactly the same but it's just obviously a little bit smaller and just make sure you check that what other items you got on there so you haven't got the, the family photos or the, the the grandkids or the the wedding photos because it's probably best that you format the SD card before you put any new sounds on it but please make sure you check there's nothing on there that you're going to delete because once you format it it's lost forever so we'll just quickly go through the components that are going to be required here so obviously the star of the show here is the arduino mini or sorry arduino nano you can use a mini also now we obviously we need a little push button or an infrared um, as i'll explain later how that may work you can actually load up this has got five so this this particular sketch used five leds for the different phases of the welder and also through here where we're bringing them down with a I'm using a 1k resistor however you probably want to have an experiment with that if you want something a little more intense uh, intense light when now here is the sound module here is the DF player mini now my understanding is not to be confused with the mp3 tf 16p for some reason I tried ordering the DF player mini and I keep getting sent these mp3s and my understanding they are vastly different so make sure you do get one of those because I have tried it with my mp3 TF16Ps and it does not work. The little uh, MP3 player likes a an 8 ohm speaker or very similar. Um, I have been using or experimenting with iPhone 4 speakers that I've pulled out of old phones and they work really nicely and the clarity is actually um, incredible. Also you need some sort of power supply, uh, 5 volts to run all this or you can use um, a 5 volt bus like I do on my layout or alternative you can use USB here if that's the way you've got it set up so for testing purposes I'll be using the USB which will supply the 5 volts and we'll get to this shortly um, on the component side of things the the actual audio will be put on a, a SD mini card and I'll show you how to briefly do that um, to move forward but obviously that's that's where the, all the sounds will sit and the little DF player will access the sound files in that particular order all right so we'll quickly have a look at the connections here now I don't have an anim animator like I have in previous video because as you can see there's a, a fair bit going on here um, once we sort of methodically go through it they're really not as bad and as hard as it really looks Okay, so the first LED we're going to look at is the red one, which is the digital pin number three. So the next one we're going to look at is the blue LED. So that's going to go to digital pin number four. We've got the next one along is the white LED, which will be going through to pin number five. And then the orange and the amber, we're looking at pins six and seven. What you can actually do here, this I'm starting this this sketch off with a little push button. But what you can actually do is do an infrared. I've yet to sort of have a play around with that, so please comment below if you've had a play around with this type of sketch. To be very interested to see how that would work with proximity. Someone walks up to the fascia and sets this sketch going. So we're looking at one side of the the push button to a a negative or a ground five volts, and then the other side is going to the digital pin number two which is the, what we call the the uh, Arduino interrupt pin so now we're going to look at the the DF player mini which is the little mp3 player so we're looking at the 
we're going to start looking at the VCC pin here. So the VCC pin is straight to a, a positive 5 volts. Then the next pin along we're going to look at is... So the next one we're looking at is the, the, the TX pin of the mini player, which is going to go to digital pin number 10 on the Arduino. Then the next one we're going to be looking at going is the TX pin that will be going to pin number 11. So just be mindful that is also going through a 1K resistor here. So moving along, we've got the, the two speaker cables here. So this is an 8 ohm speaker. So that's going to go to input speaker number 1 and number 2. Then over the other side, we need a some sort of ground to this, this system. So we're going with ground off just on the, the breadboard here. So moving along, we got to, we need a, to activate the busy pin. So that'll help us with the sketch there. So that's going to go all the way through the busy pin of the DF player, all the way through to digital pin number 12. Then powering it all up, we're going to use a, an external power supply. Um, for the example I'm going to show you, I'll be using the the USB, which is going to give me a 5 volt anyway. So it's just a matter of setting that up into the rails so we can actually power up the, the Arduino, so to speak. So once you've got all your connections and all that up and, up and running, you need to be able to flash the, the Arduino sketch to the Arduino. So I'm not going to go through that in any detail, but this is a copy of the sketch here. Now, I will link in the description below where that is found. It's not my sketch, um, but it's a lovely little website on a forum that I found that uh, can go through any issues you may have with it as well. So once that's uploaded, we'll head over to the bench. So let's go over to the bench and have a look at how this sketch all works. Now, just before we do that, we might have a quick little interlude from my sponsor, PCBWay.com. So over to you guys and girls. This video is proudly sponsored by PCBWay.com. If you're a tinkerer, inventor, or advanced electrical engineer, you need to check out PCBWay or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs ranging from standard to advanced PCBs with 1 to 30 layers with full featured printed circuit boards. PCB Way don't stop there. They offer basically everything you need to make your ideas a reality. Whether you need 3D prints, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing, they can do it all for highly competitive prices. Check out their awesome services in the link below and their offer to my viewers who support this channel. Watch out for my upcoming videos where I'll be using some of their products. What I've done in this next process is I've just very, very crudely just put a building over the top of it just to see what it looks like with all the, the shadows and the like. So also what I've done is I've condensed this sketch right down. So this is not the sketch in its entirety, just to give you a bit of an idea, but it also will have the sounds. So it'll give you some sort of idea what this may look like um, if some more time and effort, which I ran out of time, would look like moving forward if you were to put it into some sort of factory or mechanics workshop or the like. So that's the end of the video. So like all my previous videos, I have three questions to ask. So if you could comment in the description or in the comment section below, that'd be great. So number one, would you use, would you animate they call funicular number two? If so, how would you tweak it or make improvements to it that might make it look work better? And number three, like always, if you want to give me some feedback on my videos, that'd be great as well. All comment in the description below. So don't forget to subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming comment. If you think it's a good video, give it a big thumbs up. Apparently that feeds the greedy little YouTube algorithm which tells them that it's a good video, assuming you think it's a good video, and we'll put more, video, more videos in front of you. So thanks again, and I'll see you next time. You'll also be what you'll... you'll the, uh, 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 uh. Ha <laughs> ha!
<laughs> You'll also be amazed what you can achieve on a limited lodge. Uh, uh, not my teeth. I've got to put my teeth in. You'll, 